Hey guys, welcome back to New Rockstars. My name is Sam Bastian. Today I'm here to talk about the newly released trailer for Marvel and Netflix's newest series, The Defenders. We've been waiting three years since this idea of the show was announced, and with this trailer, my concerns are starting to fade away. At the very least, we'll get some kick-ass action scenes with Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and Luke Cage, and probably Iron Fist. Let's hop right into breaking down this trailer. Here's a spoiler warning for The Defenders and all of Marvel and Netflix's shows. Roll the clip. The thing about war is, it only works if both sides believe they're the good guys. The truth is, we're not so different. We fight to get back what was once ours. Right out the gates, we see Colin Wing and Danny Rand exiting a helicopter. My guess is that the Defender series takes place only a few weeks or a few months after the conclusion of Iron Fist. During the finale of Iron Fist, we find out that Kun Lun has vanished. <gasps> The whole damn city just poofed off the world. In the comics, Kunlun technically exists on another plane of existence, and a portal between Earth and Kunlun opens every few years. So my guess is that Kunlun is probably just trapped in another dimension somewhere, and Danny doesn't know where to look for them. Not surprising, he doesn't know anything. My point here is that Danny and Colleen, now a couple, have probably been searching for leads to where Kunlun could be. Best way to find out, investigate your enemies, meaning the Hand. Maybe Danny and Colleen have been overseas hunting down members of the Hand and something turns their attention to New York. Which makes sense based on the Hand training facility that we learned about in Iron Fist Season 1. Not really sure why neither Danny or Colleen thought about that, but hey, we've learned thus far that Danny isn't the smartest dude. Anyways, this might be the moment when they return to the Big Apple. Now, what is that giant crack in the earth? that's racing towards them. Is this the MCU Mole Man finally making his attack? Never. That'll never happen, especially in these shows. I mean, we can't even get a dragon in the MCU. We're definitely not going to be getting this giant secret underground civilization, no matter how cool that might be. I do have a real theory about this, though. Remember that enormous hole in the ground that Daredevil discovered in Season 2? The one that the Hand had been digging? We never really revisited that plot line. We kind of got wrapped up in Elektra is the Dark Sky, whatever that means. Whatever the Hand and Sigourney Weaver have planned, it probably involves that hole. Maybe we're going to see the return of some MCU tech as the culprit of this micro-earthquake. We've seen Hammer Tech make an appearance in this series, and we know that Rand Enterprises has been infiltrated by the Hand in the past. So, what if Rand Enterprises has been secretly developing a doomsday weapon and Danny is none the wiser. Possibly. Next we do see a hospital on fire but I want to come back to that in just a second. I think it's evidence of a bigger plot point and maybe an opportunity to get even more side characters from these shows to make an appearance in The Defenders. Next we see Jessica Jones looking anxious possibly trying to shake a tail. The edit suggests that it's Matt Murdock but my gut says that these are two different scenes edited together. I do think that Jessica is being tailed by possibly The Hand or maybe someone she's been investigating. Maybe she's been tailing someone who has ties to The Hand. She got into too deep and now people are after her. Now if that's true, I think that's how we get Matt and Jessica's first meeting, the one we saw in the first teaser for the show where Jessica is being interrogated by Misty Knight. Maybe Jessica witnesses something truly heinous or maybe she's caught investigating a crime scene right when the police show up so she's hauled in for questioning. But little does she know the hand knew she was coming and framed her to get her out of the way. Now here's where things get interesting and I think I know how this leads to our defenders coming together for the first time, but I'll come back to that in just a second. Don't want to get too confusing. Our next shot is of Luke Cage stepping off of a bus, presumably in Harlem. With a little research, we found out that the 613 bus, the one he is on, does go from Grand Central Station to Harlem in the morning, so it's basically confirmed. Also from a creative standpoint, the yellowish hue in this scene is reminiscent of Luke Cage's solo series. Keep an eye out for color schemes, that's all I'm saying. Iron Fist's first scene was green, Jessica Jones had a purplish hue to it, now Luke Cage is yellow. Seems like the individual show's color schemes are seeping into this series. A little fun tidbit. But wait a minute. Luke is in Harlem. Last we saw him, he was been taken away to Seagate Prison down in Georgia. Well, it looks like he got out yet again, and he's looking pretty happy. Probably didn't break out of prison again, so maybe he had some help. Sure, I would have loved it if the other three took a road trip down to Georgia to break him out of jail, but I guess we should just try to button up this whole prison storyline pretty quick. My guess, Luke got some legal help, either from Mr. Daredevil or more possibly from Hogarth's firm. I mainly want this because I want Luke's first encounter with some of Daredevil's cast to be foggy. Please and thank you. Hopefully we don't have to spend too much time in this season dealing with Luke getting out of prison. Just get that dude out and up to New York to save the day. But bringing it back around again, I think one of the first people Luke is going to catch up with when he gets back to New York is Misty Knight. Here's my train of thought. Luke runs into the police station to see Misty and check in on Harlem. Misty is exiting the interrogation room with Matt Murdock and Jessica Jones, his former lover. Luke and Jessica are now seeing each other for the first time in a long time. Their first meeting will probably be cordial, but maybe Jessica mentions her case and Luke uses his 
poll with Misty to get some info on where Jessica's perp could be, since that's how police stations work in TV shows. The three of them then head off together to this business complex where they run into Danny Rand getting pummeled by these suits, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Last thing I want to point out, Sigourney Weaver's character's narration, only named Alexandra, is fairly interesting. Based on her mention of war, it seems like we're finally coming to the end of the Hand storyline in these shows. Let's be honest, we know the Defenders are probably going to win and the Hand is going down, but I'm interested to see how the Hand handles war as Alexandra calls it. Sure, an earthquake is a threatening instigator, but why now? What's the end goal? They try to do the classic rule all the land story trope. They top all the buildings in New York and then rebuild everything and call it New Handshire. It isn't the worst idea. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Pennsylvania. This is the options. Anyways, roll the next clip. But in the end, and this is the end, it's just a city. You'll get used to watching them fall. And here's a slight confirmation to my theory. The gang shows up, takes out the hand, and they retreat. Now my guess is that Danny is now checking in on his business, seeing how it's going, making sure that none of the hand has infiltrated his organization. Damn it! infiltrated his organization again. My guess is that when Alexandra's narration says that they're taking back what is ours, it's referring to Rand Enterprises. Danny is not happy and attempts to take his company back by force. We always know that never works. That never works, Danny. Damn it. Awesome moment where we get the whole team taking on the hand in suits. Can't have a Netflix series without a hallway fight scene. But who's that woman in the red outfit in the background? Dumb question we already know. It's probably Electra, but based on this shot and the following shots of Electra in the hoodie on the rooftop with Alexandra, she's not the same Electra we saw in season two of Daredevil. After she was murdered by the hand and then put into that vat of blood and magic, I'm guessing we've got a little resurrection on our hands. But maybe the hand has found a way to rewire her brain to do their bidding. Maybe a little amnesia? She's not looking all there in her eyes. My guess, Alexander is using Elektra as a weapon slash distraction to keep the defenders preoccupied as the hand move forward with their plan. Also, I think we may be getting a hint to where Kunlun went. Alexander says that you'll get used to watching cities burn. Did the hand actually destroy Kunlun? Maybe. But maybe not. I'm gonna stick with my theory that uh, they moved the city, but from the hand's point of view, they believe they've destroyed Kunlun forever. Either way, Matt looks great in Jessica's scarf. Makes me kind of miss Frank Miller's inspired design of his costume in season one. Anyways, next clip. I think we're safe for now. We need to figure out our next move. No, there is no next move. And there is no we. What is that? We're not here to eat. Are those pork? No, the shrimp. Oh, this guy's got pork. God, you're weird. I'm not looking for super friends. Shit. Aw, sad Easter egg time. Notice how the Marvel logo hasn't updated to the new Marvel Studio logo we saw in Doctor Strange and Spider-Man? I feel like it's a sign to us that the Marvel TV branch is more separated from the movie branch than we originally thought. Yes, we all want Daredevil to punch Iron Man right in the face, but that's probably not going to happen. At least not in the upcoming Infinity War movie and probably all other future Marvel movies. I don't know, maybe I'm being too pessimistic. I mean, an after credit scene was confirmed by Marvel TV's head, Jeff Loeb, and maybe it could be Tony Stark asking them to come fight a giant purple alien. Nah, it's probably Punisher, but uh, I don't know, I kind of want it to be Iron Man. Anyways, we next get hopefully what becomes the headquarters of the Defenders, the Royal Dragon. Honestly, they don't seem like the team that would need a secret hideout, but a boy can dream. But based on Jessica busting Matt's balls about his powers, maybe she'll have some fun with Danny on his dragon tattoo, because they're in the Royal Dragon, dragon tattoo. There's obviously a joke there. I'm basing writing the damn series all by myself. Fun fact, we have just gotten our first nod from Marvel to DC Comics. Do you remember how Luke refers to this group? That's right, Super Friends. The same name of the Hanna-Barbera cartoon that starred Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and my boy, The Flash. And I guess that this is the closest we'll ever get to a crossover, so enjoy it. We then see Daredevil in his costume taking on a man with a pipe, I believe? So I guess the whole giving up being Daredevil conclusion we got to in Daredevil season two didn't really take. I mean, of course it wouldn't because that would have made this a really weird season of The Defenders if he wasn't in costume. That's not all that I noticed in the scene though. Notice the cinder blocks? My guess is that Daredevil is following up on the previously mentioned hole he discovered in season two. Hopefully he's got some backup. The next scene with Danny and Luke should make fans very happy. This seems like a clear nod to the Heroes for Hired team of Power Man and Iron Fist, their alter egos in the comics. Luke and Danny 
start a business where people can literally hire superheroes to come solve their problems. Would a Heroes for Hire show be a good idea? Yeah. Should it replace Iron Fist season two? Wouldn't mind it. And Jessica's scene is the perfect depiction of how she probably feels about this team up and how effective she'd be in battle. Sure, she's got superpowers, but she clearly doesn't want to be a hero. Also, I'm glad we've got some humor in this series. I miss Jessica so dang much. Next clip, please. That doesn't matter. Can't fight these people. Not even with whatever it is your hand can do. It's cheap. It's not. They're hunting our friends, our families, and they're not gonna stop there. And here's the confirmation that Electra was in that hallway during our first epic team up. Nice that she's wearing red, and would you look at that? She's checking out her signature weapon from the comics. That's right, those are size. Fun fact, there's this long running fan theory that sometimes is explored in the comics that the Ninja Turtles and Daredevil have intertwined origins. Like the same ooze that mutated the turtles took away Matt's eyesight and gave him his powers. But another thing I noticed, guess which weapon the red turtle Raphael uses? That's right, size. The two red guys use size, pretty cute. Also, oops. Hand brainwashing definitely confirmed after Elektra murders just all those individuals that she's training with. We knew she had a more violent streak in Daredevil, but this is a whole nother level of intensity. However, what if there's more to the scene? What if she's acting out because the real Elektra is hidden away deep inside her? Maybe she's fighting to get out and the act of her killing those men is proof that she isn't the perfect soldier the Hand thought they had created. I'm sure by the end of the season, she'll probably be back to some form of herself from season two of Daredevil, kind of like a uh, tease of Bucky at the end of Winter Soldier. But anyways, I'm excited to see how we work up to that point. Also, I love how each of the defenders are making fun of each other. Daredevil doesn't get Danny's deal and neither does Jessica, it seems like. But do you recognize who Danny is fighting in the sewer. That cloak looks awfully familiar. I'm guessing that that's Electra, who's either been cornered by Danny or she's hunting him down, which would be interesting. Hope Danny doesn't punch a hole straight through her damn chest because in the first season, we saw him punch a hole through a brick building. I'm pretty sure that's enough power to punch someone's sternum through their back. We also hear Danny say that the hand is hunting down their friends and family, which brings us back to the hospital on fire in the beginning of the trailer. I'm guessing the hand went hunting for Claire Temple, AKA the night nurse, AKA friend to all of these heroes at her place of work in the hospital. We also see her cornered later with Colleen Wing by none other than Bakudo, member of the hand. We last saw him getting pretty messed up by Colleen in season one of Iron Fist. So he's probably not too happy to see those two. Don't kill him, please. The next sequence just makes me so happy because not only are we seeing Karen in this season, not only are we seeing Trish in this season, but we're definitely seeing Foggy and he finally fixed his hair from Daredevil. He looks so much better. He looks like a real attorney now. But anyways, we see Trish's car stuck in a ditch. Is this the hand trying to get at her or is this a result of the earthquake in Manhattan? It's probably the latter, but still cool. And the final shot of the scene is of what I assume to be a member of the hand falling through a skylight of the Royal Dragon restaurant. Looks like he's a little late and the defenders have vacated the restaurant. Maybe, or have they? We'll find out soon. Next clip. More death is coming. And the only thing keeping Manhattan from crumbling to a pile of dust is the four of you. War is definitely coming to New York. Let's hope Luke Cage can stop all those bullets and those guns. Those look like serious business. But never fear, Stick is back. He's here to drop a crap ton of exposition on the heads of our crime fighters. We then get the ground literally rippling from what I can guess to be the same earthquake from the beginning of the trailer. That's no normal earthquake. Not that earthquakes in New York are normal, but the cars are lifting off the ground. You should be afraid. One compliment I wanna give to the showrunners, which I mentioned before, but I just love that we get to see the characters' color schemes and the lighting design of the show. Matt is in red, Jessica's in purple, Luke is saving a woman in yellow. Just Respect, I like it. Next, we get Madame Gao popping up and looking to be in a stare down with Alexandra. My guess is Gao is reporting to Alexandra being a member of the hand, but based on their looks, they're probably not on the same page. With Gao somewhat assisting the defenders in one way or another across all the shows, I have a feeling that she'll have some sort of change of heart by the end of this eight episode series. Or maybe not, maybe she'll just stab Alexandra in the back and then take all the power for herself. Kinda seems like Gao would do that. At the very least, please explain a little bit more what Gao's abilities are. We know she's got skills, but come on. Next we get Stick talking to the team with most of them in their costumes, but not so much Danny, but everyone else looks almost comic accurate, pretty cool. Now where is this theater? Maybe it's an opera house, could be another option for a hideout for the team, but possibly this is just the headquarters for 
The Chaste, the group that Stick leads. Now, if you don't know, The Chaste is another group that is not usually associated with Kunlun that works to fight the hand. So we've got the hand being attacked on two fronts. Will that be enough? Who knows? Next clip. The war for New York. It's over. Not yet. Nice ears. The horns. This shot of Electra in her black outfit on a roof holding swords. What do you think she's been tasked to do? I'm getting the feeling that the hand knows that Matt Murdock is Daredevil and to try to take him down when he least expects it, they're gonna send his thought to be dead lover to his place of work, a police station, to take him out. Or maybe she's just spying, but spies don't usually walk around with giant swords in their hands, now do they? We then see Stick in custody of Alexandra. I have some theories as to how freaking Stick could get captured. One, the hand attacked the chase unexpectedly and Stick was overwhelmed by all the soldiers. Or two, Stick and the chase attempted to take on the hand, but with Electra on the side of the devils, Stick faltered and couldn't attack his own daughter of sorts. Either way, this might be the end of Stick for the Netflix series. I love him, but he's just important enough to be killed to motivate the superheroes. Gotta always have that sacrifice. The next shot is the money shot. We finally get all the heroes in their costumes, all staying together, ready to fight. We get an awesome takedown by each of the defenders, even one of the members of the hand getting shoved through a support beam. Wait a minute. A support beam? In what looks to be an underground mine? Could this possibly be in the hole? previously mentioned. Mm. I knew the end game probably has something to do with that damn hole. What could the hand be doing down there? Maybe something's hidden down there, or maybe they're placing a weapon down there below New York. We shall see. Don't get too excited about the defenders kicking all the ass because Electra is clearly down there and fighting Iron Fist. I'm feeling like Electra is he gonna be turned back to her normal self until maybe very end of the season or it'll be explored in Daredevil season three, maybe. Also great team up of Jessica and Daredevil. Great joke about the horns. Also love the color scheme of this restaurant slash bar, red and purple lights. And you have Daredevil standing in the red and Jessica standing in the purple. Little touches like this makes the show so special. Roll next clip, please. I can see you formed a kind of bond. I promise you it's temporary. Electra. They will disappoint you. Jessica. Like it or not, you belong out there together. Bam! Iron Fist doing a flip off the roof, getting ready for battle, obviously. The Power Rangers taught us that backflips always lead to awesome fights. But don't miss that color scheme, green and yellow. Now, is he chasing that woman in the next shot? My money's on no, but who is that? Probably Jessica Jones. Lectra probably couldn't crush a car with her feet, but who is she running from? Too early to call. This trailer does do a solid job of showing the team working as just that, a team. Not just with the epic side shots of the Defenders plus Stick, but also with Luke Cage and Jessica Jones using that huge pipe to knock out some bad guys. But don't celebrate too quickly because like normal people, superheroes hold grudges, especially when you kind of killed someone's significant other. Look at you, Jessica. And Luke. Actually, I'm surprised that we're gonna be working out this interpersonal conflict in only eight episodes, but hey, every superhero team needs some sort of drama, kinda like Tony and Steve. We even get this argument hinted at by Alexandra when she tries to get into the team's heads and tear them down. I see you formed a kind of bond. I promise you it's temporary. Now also, notice where they're standing all back to back, the Royal Dragon. They maybe should have ran further away from where that hallway fight scene took place, but hey, I'll try not to judge. Back to drama for a second. <gasps> Electra's alive. Thanks, Matt. Now all befuddled. They seem to be in the same hallway where the fight takes place, or maybe it's an exterior shot of the building where the hallway fight scene takes place. I don't know. Both are good ideas. Thank you, Sam. You're welcome, Sam. We also see someone comforting Electra in the next scene, and I'm guessing it's Daredevil based on his glove. If I may make one request for this season, just don't kill off Electra, please. She's a fun character for Matt to work with, and I just don't need him carrying around that guilt in season three of Daredevil. I know all heroes on TV are moody, but let's have him be moody about something else. Please. We also get Daredevil and Iron Fist fighting, which is awesome. Who's the better fighter? The man trained in Kunlun or the man trained by the legendary stick? Can't call it now, but do pay attention to the location. Look familiar? It's the same abandoned theater or opera house where Stick gave them the 411 on their enemy. If that's just happened, then why are they fighting? Aren't Daredevil and Iron Fist on the same side when it comes to the hand? Here's my final ish theory. Might have a few more by the end of this trailer. But if the hand can brainwash Electra, what's stopping them from brainwashing one of the defenders to take on the rest of them? 
of them. Some of you might say that Elektra is more easily brainwashed because she was just resurrected. I get it, that makes sense story-wise. But if you really want to tear this team apart, then you'd send one of their own after them. But maybe two zombie ninjas is just too, too many for this series. Also, can we just appreciate Daredevil's costume for a second? We get a shot of him kneeling in the mud, spitting up blood and also probably teeth, but the whole ensemble just really works. Personally, it just kind of took me a while to appreciate the horns and such, but now I'm 100% on board. I do want to throw one idea at you about this scene though. What if the scene is more than just Daredevil, you know, throwing up blood? What if it's a nod to Matt's faith? In the comics, he's a devout Catholic and you do get some of that in this show. Maybe we'll see Matt reconnecting with his faith throughout the season. Maybe he has doubts about such a huge threat looming overhead that he consults with the church and we get more scenes with that priest from season one and two of Daredevil. I miss that guy. Next, we see Elektra in what looks to be the Royal Dragon restaurant, so it's fair to say that the reveal to Matt probably already happened, probably before we have Iron Fist helping Daredevil up in that hallway fight scene. Also, yay, Iron Fist and Daredevil are working together. That's what the show's all about. We also get a shot of an explosion destroying a building, and immediately I was worried that it was Pop's Barbershop based on the street view. Just not again. Don't, don't do that to Luke. That's not fair. You can only do so much to one building. But based on the metal awning and the design of the windows on the building next door, my guess is probably just another view of the hospital explosion that we saw earlier. Not a better option, but the hospital theory is backed up when you see Claire recovering on the bumper of an ambulance. Hopefully she didn't get physically hurt, and I hope Luke gets there quick to support her. Or maybe he can't. We see him holding a flaming pipe. Could this be the catalyst for the hospital explosion? Did the defenders fail, and did we just lose a hospital in the process? Can't really tell based on the setting, but these shows are known for being bold. Let's see the showrunners put these characters through hell, and let's see them become better heroes by the end of the season. Final clip, please. Glad we found each other. I'm not hugging you. It's been a long week. Bam, Jessica, sneak attack. This specific apartment complex doesn't look familiar, but I will never get tired of seeing her kick all of the ass. Even Iron Fist gets a solid finishing move in that cave from earlier, taking down like what, like eight dudes all at once? But wait, holy shit, I think we just found someone who could defeat the Iron Fist. This shot right here, look at who's trying to block Danny's punch, Madam freaking Gal. We never really see her exert any real stress during the fights we've seen her in so far. Could she block or redirect the Iron Fist? Or is this the end of Madame Gao? Has Danny finally become the immortal Iron Fist that he kept bragging about? I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. This last shot before the Defenders logo on Come As You Are plays is, is gold. By the way, we can probably say that this is the theme song for the group, Come As You Are, meaning that these super people probably aren't the ideal superheroes, but hey, they're still gonna save the day. Anyways, Daredevil is proud of what they're doing and Luke shoots him down for a hug. I'm not hugging you. Just give him a dang hug, man. Come on, Luke. I'm guessing we'll see a hug at the end of the season, but dang it, it better be a good one. Maybe Captain America can join in and now I'm just asking too much, aren't I? Maybe Punisher, you know, because he's been teased a lot, but he doesn't seem like the hugging type. The final shot of the show, Jessica drinking in public. Chugging a beer on the subway, getting judgmental looks from her teammates. The last thing I want to point out, and this does not make Jess look too good, did she just steal a beer from a homeless man? There's a man passed out on the subway, beer in his hand, with a bag of beer on the floor of the subway. I don't know, maybe I'm being too judgmental. Let's just hope that maybe Jessica bought the beers and she gave the rest away to this man. I'm gonna guess no, she probably just took one right out of the bag. But on that note, what do you think of this Defenders trailer with a show this monumental? My guess is that we'll get some teases for future Marvel Netflix shows and possibly some hints to maybe crossovers with ABC see for the movies, hopefully. Which do you think we'll get? Let us know in the comments down below. For those of you who are looking for a kick-ass new show to watch while you wait for The Defenders, why not check out Verve? Made by the team over at Crunchyroll, Verve is home to your favorite channels that give you a chance to discover more content from the creators you know and love and support their new stuff. If you're a fan of the creators of Adventure Time, then you've got to start watching the Cartoon Hangover channel. They've got Bee and Puppycat, and trust me, it's worth checking out. If you're more of an anime fan, then go ahead and check out the Funimation channel where you can watch Attack on Titan Season 2 dub, but if you're more of a fan of subtitles, then go ahead and check out Crunchyroll. 
Rolls channel. They've got options for everybody. Check it out for yourselves. Their library of content is always expanding. To make it even easier for you, go to www.verve.co slash gopremium and sign up for a free seven day trial of the Verve Combo Pack, where you can watch all your favorite anime like My Hero Academia Season 2 ad free in HD on all of your devices. Go ahead and check out that link or click the link in the description below. Thank you all for watching. Please give this video a like. And if you've got any comments or questions about this video, write them down below or hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sam Basher and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>